Hello and welcome. In today's video, I'll be making a 1780s Italian gown from the American Duchess Guide to 18th Century Dressmaking. The Italian gown or Italian nightgown is the English name for a fitted gown with two to four pieces in the back and a separate skirt attached at the waist. This differs from a robe a la Anglise, which has the back panels of the bodice and skirt cut in one. The Italian gown has an entirely separate bodice and skirt that are attached together. I hope you enjoy. I first cut two panels of this lovely Indian block print cotton lawn for my skirt. The panels are the full length of the fabric, 45 inches, and 40 inches long. I then cut the bodice pieces out. There is a front, a side back, a back, a strap, and a sleeve piece. I used four yards of fabric in total for this gown. Those same bodice pieces were then cut out of some spare linen. Before assembly could begin, the pieces were basted together at the side seams. I then pinned together the center back, side back, and side seams. Those seams were all sewn by machine using a half inch seam allowance. The seams were then ironed open. After the seams were ironed open, I felled them down by hand using linen thread. Here you see me marking the half inch hem of the bodice with a friction pen. The hem was then ironed, turned inwards, and pinned down. The hem was sewn by hand. I then attach the strap lining. A block print and cotton strap will be added later. The straps were attached right side to wrong side, which is a little confusing, but once I remembered how the strap should be pinned, it all worked out. You attach them right to wrong side so that the interior is nicely finished. The straps were sewn by a machine using a half inch seam allowance. Here are how the straps looked once sewn. I also finished the neckline of the bodice in the same manner as the hem at this time. The final part of the bodice to be sewn, minus the sleeves, was to finish the front edges of the bodice, which were finished just like the hem and the neckline. Now it was time to tackle the sleeves. I pinned the underarm seam of both the cotton and linen sleeves. The seam was sewn by machine using half inch seam allowance. At this time, I also sewed the elbow dart in each sleeve. I then cut the sleeve lining a quarter of an inch at the cuff and pinned it right sides together to the outer sleeve. This was sewn using half an inch seam allowance. The sleeve was then turned inwards, thus finishing all the seams, and since the lining was a tad shorter than the outer sleeve, it turned inward nicely and negated the need for having the sleeve. Before I set the sleeves, I basted the two layers together. The sleeves were then pinned in place the usual way, from one end of the strap to the other, and sewn by machine. I then placed the bodice in the dress form and smoothed the sleeve head over the strap lining in the 18th century manner. My sleeve doesn't have a lot of fullness, but you would pleat the remainder of the sleeve to fit in this area. Mm -hmm. 
After I basted the sleeve head in place, I finished the remainder of the sleeve seam. The edges of the cotton strap were turned under, then the entire strap was pinned over the strap lining, covering and thus finishing all the seams in that area. The strap was sewn using a prick stitch. Now that the sleeves were set and the bodice done, I had turned my attention to the skirt. I first seamed up the center back seam of the skirt, and since the edges were both the selvage of the fabric, I didn't have to finish the seam. After that seam was sewn, I used my nifty new roll 10 foot to finish the top edge of the skirt. I then turned the one inch hem under by half an inch, then half an inch again, and the front edges of the skirt under by three quarters of an inch. These were then sewed in place by hand using a large running back stitch. Now it was time to pleat the skirt. I measured the bottom of the bodice to about two inches forward of the side seam and pleated my skirt accordingly. I used about half an inch knife pleats towards the center back of the skirt. I pleated by eye. Here is how the skirt looks once pleated. I think my finished width was about 22 inches. Here you see me laying my bodice on top of the skirt and pinning. You'll have more excess fabric at the center back because the center back of your bodice is longer than the front. I think my center back skirt was about 35 inches and my center front about 38. I then tried on my skirt over all my proper foundations to check if it was level. It all checked out, which means I could attach the two components together. I sewed the bodice in place by hand using a prick stitch. This is all I needed since my fabric was very light. If you have a heavier weight fabric or more fabric in the skirt, I'd recommend a stronger or tighter stitch. Here you see me cutting away at the center back seam of the excess skirt. This is so the excess can lay flat when ironed. The excess skirt was then ironed towards the skirt to give volume. Here is how the gown now looked on the dress form. The final step was to attach four ties to loop up the skirt, if so desired. I used half an inch cotton twilt tape to cut 14 inches long. Two were sewn 27 inches away from the center front of the skirt and 13 inches from the hem. The other two were sewn in the middle of the side back panel where the bodice and skirt met. The four ties were then tied into bows, which could be tied looser or tighter to create different effects. As always, everything you mentioned in this video and more in the reveal will be linked below. Enjoy!